So, you like fragrances, but you wanna just have one fragrance that you can wear all year round. Basically something that will get it done no matter what situation you find yourself in, whether it's spring, summer, fall, winter, day, night, something that can do it all. Well, I've got 15 fragrances for you here today that will do that for you, 15 designers. We'll do a niche and indie version before too long also. I forgot to, to welcome you guys. Hey friends, Ash here, welcome back to Gen Sense. Got distracted with the whole rising up behind the table thing. Now I have each one of these fragrances linked down in the description, feel free to check them out down there and uh, we've got a wide price range here as far as designers go. Some of these are going to be really affordable and some are going to be a little bit on the higher end as far as designer pricing goes. But each one of these I feel like in their own right is a, is a special one. And also uh, codes. Here's codes. Enjoy. In uh, October, the code for Lucky Scent changes to Gents 10 from 2023 Gents, so keep that in mind. All the other codes are pretty much the same as they have been. Now I have my handy dandy basket of fragrances down here. You hear that? Maybe one day I'll show you the basket of fragrances, but for now it remains a mystery. So I'll just reach into the fragrance basket and whatever I pull out will be the first fragrance and it is, okay, this one, Barbados XX Artisan. Love the look on this. I think it looks sweet. It's got almost like a silver spray painted vibe, like a silver spray painted wicker basket, but still cool. Now this is a vetiver fragrance. So uh, some people will run screaming away from that like they just saw uh, a shambling corpse coming after them. It is after all getting close to Halloween, so why not work in some zombies? <laughs> But don't worry, even if you're a little afraid of vetiver, this one is a really easy wearing vetiver. It's very clean and fresh. So instead of being like a smoky, potentially earthy vetiver, this one is more like citrusy and aromatic with a woody undertone. And the pricing for this one is great as well. At Joma Shop, 35 bucks for a 125 mil size bottle. That's awesome pricing. And one thing I love about this one on top of the vetiver, of course, is the bitter orange off the top. It gives you a different take on citrus and I think really helps accentuate the vetiver that you have in here. So it's really classy, easy to wear, great presentation, cheap price, lots to love about it, and an easy way to get started into your journey of loving vetiver. Aww. Mm, we all should. Okay, here we go. They missed my foot. We're good. We're good. Uncoordinated, guys. Just, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Lacoste Loam Timeless. Also cheap. I don't know. I'm throwing the bottles all over the place. Lacoste Loam Timeless. Maybe that wasn't the greatest name because this is the last fragrance, at least so far, in this line. It came out in 2019. There's been nothing new since. Lacoste has pretty much just been doing Match Point and L1212 since then. But it's a really nice fragrance. And if you like fragrances that do utilize tea, you gotta check this out. Awesome year round scent, low price, good quality, good compliment puller, easy to wear. Maybe I'll just flip one more bottle, but I swear I'll catch this one. I have it, I know what it is. I got it. Kenzo Ohm Eau de Parfum. Maybe no more flips. So this one, I didn't own until recently. Uh, I've got a couple other fragrances in this line that frankly I'm not really in love with, but you guys kept telling me Kenzo Ohm Eau de Parfum is sick. You gotta get it. So I listened to you, I trusted you. And it is, it's good stuff. So much so that I'll probably review this before too long. So you guys were right, give yourselves a pat on the back. Love the bottle, I always have. Even with the fragrances I don't like in this line, I think the bottle is awesome. Reminds me of like a Bushido Blade from Squaresoft back in the day, showing my age. If you played Bushido Blade, you know, let me know in the comments so I don't feel alone here. <laughs> Or like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon or something. I don't know, man, like sliced bamboo. So Kenzo Ohm Eau de Parfum. This is an aquatic fragrance with a leather undertone. Sounds weird, but works really well and has a decent amount of sweetness in there also. Good performance. It's not at all just a summertime fragrance. This stuff will cut through the cold and actually would be a really cool change of pace versus what people typically think of as a winter scent if you're wearing this one. So lovely stuff, Kenzo Ohm Eau de Parfum. This is 
great. And obviously with 15 fragrances, there are a bunch that I am leaving out. So feel free in the comments to leave other fragrances that people should check out as a potential year round signature scent type of fragrance. Again, keeping in mind that these are designers. That way there's like a, a database almost between this list and the ones that you guys add. All right, I am not flipping this one. I am gently bringing it up. Ralph Lauren, Ralph's Club, Parfum. Really, really enjoy this one. It does have that kind of blue fragrance feel to it. It'll remind you a little of uh, Y Le Parfum or Y Eau de Parfum, sort of in that wheelhouse. It's the same perfumer and this makes use of apple like Y Eau de Parfum, for example. So that's where you're gonna get some of those overlapping vibes, if you wanna call it that. So this one's a sweet, aromatic, woody fragrance, fresh as well. You've got lavender in here. You have vetiver, you have cedar as the fragrance dries down, clary sage as well, geranium, patchouli, among other notes. Really good performance, big compliment puller. I actually like the line in general. Ralph's Club, all the way across the board. I think for what they're made to do, which is to be basically year round fragrances, they do extremely well. So I'm just kind of splitting the difference here and going with the Parfum, but I would suggest that if you go into a store and they have all three versions of Ralph's Club, try all three. Just get whichever one you like the most, but that should be in general, right? You just try the fragrances and get the ones you like, yeah. After that, an obvious one exploded from Mont Blanc. Wow. Oh, cool, never seen you before. Explore is uh, like a quintessential year-round fragrance, and that's because it smells quite similar to another quintessential year-round fragrance, Aventus. Ever heard of that? Creed Aventus, no? Yeah, it smells like that, we all know this. Really nice, fresh, spicy opening, like a little pop of fresh spices along with citrus and then woods. Extremely easy to wear, a hyper versatile fragrance and good price as well on this one. Uh, we've talked about Explorer 72,000 times, but this one still works all year long. So that's why it's here. Thought about putting Legend in from Mont Blanc, but just had to go explore. And uh, this next one, yeah, it's Perry Ellis America. Very affordable. The reason I kind of grumbled and grumbled about this is because uh, America also smells a bit similar to Creed Aventus. So we got two kind of Aventus-y scents here. What's interesting though is even though both of these are compared to Creed Aventus, if you spray these on side by side, they're completely different fragrances, which does go to show you how wide that net is when you say, oh, it smells like Aventus. You could go up to somebody who has never smelled Aventus, doesn't really know anything about fragrances, and spray this on one side and this on the other side and be like, hey, do you think these smell pretty much the same? And they'll just look at you cockeyed and be like, no, not really. But if you're a fragrance person, you'll smell both of those and be like, I detect a little Aventus in here. Am I right? <laughs> it is what it is. So Perry Ellis America is gonna be more fruit forward and sweeter than Explorer. Explorer is gonna be a little bit more woody, as I said, fresh spicy. It does still have that citrus, uh, but America has like a very sweet kind of pineapple opening. Yeah, just off the atomizer, you can get a big whiff of that. And as it dries down, you're gonna get some amber and birch in there, but it's not really a, a smoky scent at all, more fruity and sweet. So while Explorer gets all the hype and Perry Ellis pretty much is just like a no-name fragrance at this point, Perry Ellis America. I think a lot of people would actually think America smells better than Explorer. So I include both of these here, uh, kind of two sides of a similar scent profile. One more fresh spicy, one more fruity sweet. There they are. After that, we got Dior Homme 2020. Uh, quite a woody fragrance, a uh, very modern woodsy fragrance. I love this stuff, but I used to hate it with a passion, a burning passion. When this first released, despised it. Quite classy. I would say of everything we've talked about so far, Dior Homme and the uh, Barbados over here, probably the two classiest of the bunch that we've spoken about. But with it being so woody, you do have to enjoy fragrances that are heavy on the woods. As long as you do enjoy that, you will think this is fantastic. A bit of a modern masterpiece, even though a lot of people will argue that because of what they did to our boy Dior Ohm. Goodbye, Iris. Hello, I see we super. This one is a standout though. For me, daytime, nighttime, any season, to the office, formal events, whatever, it can get the job done. It'll have you smelling like a million bucks. And since we talked about this one, the next one we'll talk about is Burberry. Hero. Why this one right after Dior Homme 2020? Well, because that's also a, a woody fragrance. Yeah, very 
very woody. So it has bergamot and juniper and cedar and cedar and cedar. And you may hear that and be like, what's wrong with your brain? It's like misfiring. It's like uh, you're an android. Somebody lifted up the top of your head and just poured water in. Blah. Atlas cedar, Virginian cedar, Himalayan cedar. So they really want to get that point across. And as far as the uh, fragrance community, when this fragrance came out, uh, didn't get a whole lot of love. As far as sales, <laughs> trying to think of what to say there, just sales. Did really well for Burberry, really well. It's inoffensive, it's fresh, it's as I've said 32 times, woodsy. Really easy to wear, good office fragrance, good business fragrance, formal fragrance, work fragrance. Potentially uh, a solid date one as well because it does get surprisingly a good amount of compliments. I guess I shouldn't be surprised if it's selling pretty well that means people like it, so yeah. So these two are, are you know, kind of playing in the same ballpark. They don't necessarily overlap, they don't smell the exact same or anything like that, but you would use these at the same times, same places. So I would suggest sampling these. Kind of put them up against each other if you're in a store where they're both available and see which style you like more. Let's keep it moving with Calvin Klein's Eternity Flame. Yeah, this is like the, uh, the sad flame that nobody pays attention to. Everybody pays attention to Eros Flame. This one is very affordable. You can find this at discounters for around 25 bucks a lot of times, and you can find a 100 mil for like around 30 or so. The opening is probably the best part. It's got a pineapple opening that smells really nice. It's like pineapple mixed with warm spice. You also have rosemary in here. You have amber and leather as the fragrance dries down. It does stay wearable the whole way through, really appealing. Performance is so-so, but it is as I said, really inexpensive. So you can blast this on heavily during the winter if you wanted to and get a little better performance that way. And during the summer, even though it has kind of a, in general, uh, note breakdown that you would think of as fall and winter time, because it's not too powerful, it works really well during the high heat months also. Let's keep it moving with the fragrance I don't even really like. Age 24, Eau de Parfum from Hermes. Now, truth be told, I, I really hate H24 Eau de Toilette. Like, I, I don't like it. I know some people really do, and if you do, more power to you. Really glad it works for you, uh, because it, it doesn't for me. H24 Eau de Parfum, a little bit better, a little bit better. Do I wear it? I don't, but I don't actively despise it, so that's positive. But I bring this one up because for some people, this is an amazing alternative to a lot of the big blue fragrances out there. Your Sauvages, your Wise, your Bleu de Chanel's, etc. This one has a decent amount of sweetness to it. It's very green, so it has this oak moss and sclarine and then Narcissus in here. So yeah, those notes, uh, you don't see those all that often, especially not together in men's fragrances. So it definitely does its own thing. When you smell H24, you know right away, oh yeah, it's H24. Whether positively or negatively. Woo, it's strong too, this stuff packs a punch. And I have heard from a bunch of you out there that H24 does wonders for you, that people love it. Compliment, magnet, performance beast, blah, blah, blah. So check this one out as an alternative to your Dior Homme 2020s, your Bleu de Chanel's, your Ralph's Clubs, etc. It may just be a little, not hidden gem, but signature scent for you. And since we spoke about blue fragrances, here's one, Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum. Now, truth be told, this is the only major blue fragrance of the three that I have in today's list. I don't have a Sauvage, I don't have a, a Y. And the main reason is because they're just extremely obvious answers. I knew I had to put at least one of them in, hence Blue de Chanel here, but we all know that. Right, we all know Sauvage, why? And in most of these you're gonna know as well, but still, they're just a little too on the nose. So I was gonna pick just one, and Bleu de Chanel de Parfum is the one that I decided to highlight, because for me, this is probably one of the most versatile fragrances that has ever been made. Yes, it's extremely popular. Yes, lots of people out there own it, but it's for a good reason. It performs well, it smells great, it's extremely classy, and still has that compliment factor. I love a good classy fragrance, I absolutely do, but for some people in their minds when they're wearing a fragrance that's very classy and gets like whittled down to just a small number of places that they can use the scent, Bleu de Chanel you don't run into that issue, but it still has that classiness to it. So Bleu de Chanel, very obvious. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do, do uh, Luna Rosa Carmen. I know, I know, I said no Sauvage, there's no Sauvage in this list, okay? But there is Luna Rosa Carmen, which yeah, kind of smells like Sauvage. 
doesn't it? Yeah, it smells like Sauvage Eau de Toilette uh, with a Prada twist. So not quite as loud, a little bit smoother, a little bit cleaner, we know the drill. It still has that compliment factor that Dior Sauvage does have. So kind of, kind of cheating, but Luna Rosa Carbon, there it is. It smells kind of like Sauvage. After that, Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Beau. Le Beau and Le Beau Le Parfum specifically, uh, probably two of the fragrances that have grown on me most over the past, I don't know, number of years. Get off my finger, man. I don't dislike Le Beau or Le Beau Le Parfum. I never did. Uh, I just wasn't immediately enthralled by them. And then as time went on and I was able to wear them more, it's like a light switch went off in my brain. <laughs> Smells awesome, dude. Coconut is one of the main notes here. And I keep saying about Le Beau Le Parfum, check that stuff out too. I think you can wear that year round also. That sort of sweetness that it has, that lightly creamy, exotic kind of sweetness really helps set it apart. I don't have to tell you, but mint fragrances nowadays are just sweet on top of sweet on top of sweet. And this is sweet, don't get me wrong, but it's also fresher than a lot of things coming out nowadays. So it gives you more range, more versatility to use it. And people go crazy for this stuff. It is a massive compliment monster, just a compliment beast. So uh, yeah, LeBeau, go for that. Two more, next one is Coach. For men. Uh, frankly, you can go with any of the Coach fragrances. They're all pretty affordable from discounters. Coach Platinum would work really well year round. I think probably the two best would be this one and Coach Platinum if we're talking all year use. Open Road, you could you could maybe pull that one off, but um, the performance is not great on that one. So winter time, you might have some trouble. You'd have to really go heavy. And it smells kind of like Dolce & Gabbana K, which I'm not a big fan of. So while I did say all Coach, <laughs> fragrances you could probably go with. Let's just whittle that down and say this one in Coach Platinum. Yeah, let's do that. So like I said, it's affordable and it's a blue fragrance and it's actually a pretty good one, especially for the price. Yeah, it has cardamom, it has pear, and it has vetiver as some of the notes in the scent. It's got that sparkly kind of fresh, sweet opening that's just super appealing. Really easy to wear, it puts a smile on your face. A great scent to have in your collection, even if you've got a big collection, because that really is that kind of fragrance that you can wear anywhere and it's gonna have you smell awesome and it's really cheap so who cares you know you've got 50 fragrances and this is one of them you can keep this kind of like as your backup for any situation you don't want to think about what you're wearing boom go with that gets the job done last but not least Valentino Uomo born in Roma yellow dream it wins the award for worst name out of everything here and it ain't close I still contend that yellow dream is an absolutely awful name in English I had a yellow dream oh. You cleaned it up. It's really pleasant though. <laughs> it's kind of stronger with you-ish, uh, but with a fresher take. Uh, so it's got pineapple in there. There's a lot of pineapple in these fragrances here today, but it has pineapple in there off the top and gingerbread also. So it's like this weird kind of mix going on there. Fresh, fruity, sweet in the opening leading into uh, gingery, warm, spicy, sweet undertones or overtones really as it dries down. Like I said, similar to Stronger With You in some ways. And when it first came out, I, I did bash it for that. Not super unique when it's uh, smelling like Stronger With You, but don't worry because since that fragrance came out, there have been like 50 fragrances that smell like Stronger With You. So I, that no longer disqualifies you. They were just ahead of the curve. And uh, actually, to be fair, once again, to Valentino here, Yellow Dream has more of an original twist on the Stronger With You style than a lot of fragrances that came after it. So yeah, and in giving it more wear, it's a nice fragrance. It's not to the same extent, but it's almost like with uh, Dior Homme, when they changed up the Dior Homme line, Valentino completely redid the Womo line, but I really like the direction that they've taken with these last couple. Born in Roma Intense, I love that stuff. And um, Coral Fantasy, really good also. So kind of like working back into this one, I do like it a lot more nowadays and people really uh, love that one as well. I still think Born in Roma is the worst of the bunch though, the original. So there we go, 15 fragrances, bunch of different styles here, but each one of these you can wear all year round. Again, uh, drop some more options down in the comments. Let's fill this out. You know, we get a whole bunch of options. Thank you all for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.